the greatest moment at Old Comiskey Park took place on July 6th, 1933. In 1933, Chicago, Illinois was scheduled to hold the World's Fair to celebrate the city's centennial. The event would be well remembered for its many great attractions and technological innovation, but what may be best remembered for it was an event created by a Chicago Tribune sports editor by the name of Arch Ward that would forever change baseball. Ward was the brainchild of an exhibition game where the American League's best players would compete against the National League's top talents, and the event would be called the All-Star Game. The game was held on July 6th in the home of the White Sox, Comiskey Park, and 47,595 fans would flock to the ballpark to see what would become a summer tradition known as the Midsummer Classic. The game would include its share of future Hall of Famers, including Babe Ruth, Jimmy Fox, Lou Gehrig, and Al Simmons. The two starring pitchers were Bill Hallahan of the St. Louis Cardinals for the National League and Lefty Gomez of the New York Yankees for the American League. After a scoreless first, the American League would strike for the first run in the bottom of the second. After retiring Al Simmons leading off, Hallahan would walk Jimmy Dykes and Joe Cronin, and one out later, Lefty Gomez would come up and drive in the first All-Star Game run on a single to center. Then, in the bottom of the third, the American League would make more history. Charlie Geringer would lead off with a walk, and then Babe Ruth would come to the plate. In his first of two All-Star appearances, the Bambino would hit a fly ball to right field that would go over the fence for the first All-Star Game home run, and it gave the American League a 3-0 lead. The game would remain 3-0 until the sixth. Vaughn Warnicke would come up with one out and triple to right. Pepper Martin would ground out to drive home Warnicke, and Frankie Frisch would come up and hit a home run to make it 3-2. Then, in the bottom of the sixth, Joe Cronin would lead off with a single, and after being sacrificed to second, pinch hitter Earl Averill came to the plate and singled to center to score Cronin to make it 4-2. The National League would not go down quietly, however. Lefty Grove would come in to pitch the top of the seventh. He would give up a leadoff single to Bill Terry, and one out later, pinch hitter Pi Trainor would line a double to center to put runners at second and third with only one out. But Grove would strike out Gabby Hartnett and retire Woody English on a fly ball. Then, in the bottom of the seventh, the American League had a chance to blow the game open. With Carl Hubble on the mound, he would walk Lou Gehrig to lead off the inning, and one out later, Jimmy Dykes would single to put runners on first and second with Joe Cronin coming to the dish. But Hubble would retire him on a fly ball and then retire Rick Farrell to get out of the inning. In the top of the eighth, Frankie Frisch came to the plate and singled with one out, and one out later, Chick Hafey hit a line drive to deep right field that looked like it was going to tie the game, but Babe Ruth would reach his glove over the fence to take a home run away and preserve the 4-2 lead. In the ninth, Grove would retire the first two hitters, and with one out to go, Tony Cuccinello would come to the plate as the National League's last hope. Gomez would strike him out to end the game, and give the American League a 4-2 victory. The 1933 All-Star Game was initially intended to be a one-time event, but it was much more successful than anticipated, and Major League Baseball decided to make it an annual event, which would continue to thrive, and while not the first of its kind, it would pave the way for All-Star Games and other sports, including football, basketball, and soccer. And in 1962, Ward's contribution would be recognized even more with the creation of the Arch Ward Trophy, which would be given to the All-Star Game's most valuable player each year.